Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to back up a site and uh, move that site uh, from your current hosting account to a new hosting account via cPanel. Note that this tutorial will work with practically any site. It doesn't have to be a uh, Magento store since that is what I'm uh, moving. It can even be a blog such as a WordPress blog or a Drupal blog. It can even be a uh, uh, press the shop store as long as the steps are followed correctly and as long as uh, you uh, change uh, the configuration files if needed um, everything uh, will work as expected uh, to start what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a brief introduction of uh, why I'm going to uh, do things a certain way for example I will not be using the backup wizard because the backup wizard is actually used uh, to back up a site and restore that site on your current hosting account. When you're moving to a new hosting account, your home directory path changes and there are a lot of uh, configuration uh, f uh, files for the server that change as well. So if you back up your entire home directory and then restore that home directory on um, a new hosting account, there's a chance that you'll uh, actually uh, uh, ruin uh, the configuration of that uh, hosting account and then you'll have to contact uh, support and have them restore your hosting account to uh, default uh, condition. So to start what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the file manager. Uh, besides uh, backing up files I'm also going to show you how to back up a database. Uh, most uh, modern applications these days use databases if your application does not use a database, you do not need to worry about backing up your database. As for emails, we're actually going to uh, create uh, email accounts uh, manually. So you can easily just look in your uh, email accounts here and just uh, create those email accounts on the new uh, hosting account. Uh, so to start, simply go into your file manager and go into home directory. I actually ticked off uh, show hidden files here. Uh, this is up to you. Uh, in reality, when you back up a directory, it backs up everything inside that directory. So uh, this is not needed, but if you're going to back up on a, a file uh, uh, by file basis, then you will need uh, to show hidden files. Either way, it doesn't hurt to have this option checked off. Now, simply uh, locate the directory and files that you want to uh, move over to the new hosting account. In most cases, this is just the public underscore HTML directory, which is the directory that holds uh, the files uh, of your site. Now, if you also have uh, subdomains, you're basically going to want to repeat the steps that I'm doing for the public underscore HTML directory for those subdomain directories as well. So simply uh, highlight this directory and click on compress. And now choose a compression type. I'm going to choose zip archive. Note that some browsers actually unarchive files upon download. For example, Safari does that. And when I go into preferences, I actually uh, unchecked open save files after downloading. If your browser does that, and if you do not have Safari, you will want to look into how to disable the feature on your uh, browser. Uh, of course, you can always choose a different compression type. Regardless of which you choose, uh, cPanel will be able to extract the file once we upload it to the new hosting account. So you do not have to choose a zip archive. So simply uh, select your archive type and then click on uh, compress files and we'll wait for this directory to uh, be compressed. Okay, so now my directory has uh, been compressed and I now have that file right here for download. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this file by highlighting it and then clicking on the download link. And now while that downloads, we can uh, proceed to backing up our uh, MySQL database. Uh, for the database, I will actually use the backup wizard. So simply go to the backup wizard click on the backup link here, click on MySQL databases, and then just simply click on the database that you wish to uh, back up. And by clicking it, you will actually start a download process. And as you can see, my uh, uh, 
database has been uh, downloaded. Uh, note that if you have a very large uh, database, this may uh, take a while. So once uh, your file has finished uh, downloading, we can uh, begin the restoration uh, process on the new hosting account. Okay, so here I am on my new uh, hosting account. As you can see, my home directory has changed. To begin, what we're going to do is we're going to restore uh, the MySQL database. Note that uh, the restoration process will work with all uh, types of uh, applications unless you have a very uh, sophisticated application which really requires a lot of skill. But with most uh, CMSs these days such as uh, the one that I'm restoring Magento and with blogs such as WordPress, uh, the restoration process is actually very easy. So it doesn't uh, take much uh, skill. The only thing that might happen is you might have to uh, change the configuration uh, for your database and for your uh, uh, home directory. For example, if uh, your uh, application uh, needs uh, you to specify where the public underscore HTML directory is located, then you will need to find that configuration file and change that path. The best way to figure out whether you need to do that is by simply doing a search online uh, for uh, for example if you're looking for WordPress you would just uh, type in uh, WordPress uh, configuration files and uh, you will basically uh, find the information that you need for uh, Magento and WordPress all that's really needed is uh, that you uh, specify uh, the database credentials and if you can somehow manage to keep the database uh, credentials the same as you have as you had them on uh, your old hosting account then you do not need to change anything at all so to start simply go to backup wizard and now click on restore and click on MySQL databases and then click on choose file and then select your uh, database uh, file here it should be uh, ending in uh, .sql.gz if uh, it doesn't have the .gz it should have at least the uh, .sql extension and then upload note that this should work with just about any site um, as long as I mean well it should work at least with the average size uh, site um, if you have a very large database I mean it has to be really large uh, this might not be possible and then you would have to go through shell to restore the database which uh, I don't actually cover that in this tutorial because um, I assume that most people watching this video have a basic site that they're restoring So now simply go back and actually we're going to go home and we're going to go into uh, MySQL databases and now we can confirm that our database is here. As you can see uh, the name of my database uh, changed uh, due to my uh, home directory changing uh, and also my username will actually be different this time. Um, again, if you can somehow have uh, the new hosting account um, with the same uh, name for the path here as uh, you had on the old hosting account, some hosts, for example, let you choose uh, your username, it would be wise to do that. This way you wouldn't have to make any changes to the configuration files. In my case, I'll make the changes. It's no big deal. I'm just going to use a basic uh, password. Uh, I suggest using a slightly more uh, difficult password to guess than this. Create user. And now simply add that user to that database. Simply select the user and click add. Select the privileges that you wish to give that user. I'm just going to go with all privileges and click on make changes. And now we are ready to restore our uh, files. Simply go to File Manager. And 
and I'm going to go to the home directory and I'm going to choose uh, show hidden files because uh, for files such as the that HT access file uh, it will be hidden and you will not be able to move it if you do not uh, check off this box that is if you do have uh, that uh, HT access uh, file now go to the public uh, underscore HTML directory and then in here you're going to want to actually upload that uh, zipped file that we downloaded earlier of your old uh, public underscore HTML directory and I'm going to explain why I'm doing things this way I'm doing things this way because if I were to go into the home um, directory here and if I were to upload that file directly I would actually overwrite the public underscore HTML directory by doing that I might um, overwrite important uh, directories or files that are in that directory that belong to the server. Instead, all I really want to do is just uh, upload the files from my application. So this is why I'm going to upload to the public underscore HTML directory. Now, if you have um, other directories uh, for your, if you have subdomains and if you have directories uh, for it, you're going to actually want to uh, upload uh, that zipped uh, f file of those uh, directories directly to your home directory because those directories would actually be in your home directory similar to how the public underscore HTML directory is in your home directory. Now just go to the public underscore HTML home directory and click on upload. Choose your file and then upload and once it is finished we can uh, continue. Okay, so now that our uh, file has finished uploading, we can go back here. And now we simply uh, select the compressed file and extract. And now we can uh, delete the compressed uh, file. If you'd like to hold on to it in case something goes wrong, you can. Now go into uh, the new uh, public underscore HTML directory and copy all the directories and files over to the uh, main public underscore HTML directory. Simply uh, select all of the files and directories and then uh, click on uh, move. I'm actually going to move. You can do a copy. Um, a copy might be good in case uh, something goes wrong again. Uh, in my case, I'll just move. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this is the path where we would like to move all these files. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move them in the public underscore HTML directory. So uh, you're going to want to remove this part because right now uh, since there are two public underscore HTML directory this one is inside of this one so we actually want to move the files and directories from within this one to the main one so your path should look like this and then click on move files and now the files have been moved and we can go up one level and as you can see our um, all of our files are back in here now and now we can delete that empty public underscore HTML directory just make sure that you don't delete your uh, primary uh, public underscore HTML directory by accident and now depending on your application um, and depending on your uh, MySQL uh, database uh, credentials you might have to change uh, your configuration file and you might not have to. Uh, the best way to figure out is by going to your site right now and checking to see whether it loads. If it loads you do not have to uh, do anything else. Uh, you might however want to make sure that your folder permissions are correct but other than that um, you shouldn't have to uh, do anything else. In my case, uh, my uh, database uh, credentials did change, so I will actually have to go into the app directory here, and then into my uh, etc. directory here, and then edit this uh, local.xml 
file which is where my uh, database uh, credentials are and that uh, file looks like uh, this and then I would just uh, basically get my database credentials from here and this would be my database name which would go right here where it says DB name again uh, depending on your application uh, this page would look somewhat different but it would basically uh, be the same principle as it is here and then I just uh, get my username from over here and then my password and I simply click on save and now I can uh, test uh, my new store and as you can see everything uh, worked out fine hopefully things worked out well for you as well and if uh, something went wrong you can always look into uh, the configuration file or just uh, make sure that you followed all the other steps properly and if you need to add um, the path for your uh, public HTML directory in a uh, configuration file that would be right here you would look at the home directory and uh, you would likely have to uh, change the old home directory to the new directory. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. And also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com.